Hi everyone, it's absolutely baking hot in the UK right now, so I'll have to keep this short and sweet here. I've got the light on me above my head and I'm just boiling hot in this room, but it's a short and sweet game here from Ali Reza Firuzja. He was just 12 years old at the time this game was played, and I'm looking back at these games. He played in the 2016 Iranian National Championship, and it was a phenomenal event for him. It put him on the map as a chess prodigy because he actually won the event, beat out a field of strong titled players, grandmasters included. So this is a game that he played in round two. He's just won his round one with the white pieces. He now got another white game here and he kicks off once again with his tried and trusty pawn to e4. So e6 was played in this game, the French defense. We had these standard moves here and now Ali Reza goes for knight c3, which invites the winnower variation with bishop to b4. Now the main move in this position by Miles is pawn to e5. In the chess.com database here, there's about 25,000 games from this position, and this is the kind of thing you get, pawn a3, chops here, and you get this queen g4 stuff very often, gets really sharp, white's gobbling pawns here, sometimes running the h-pawn, but black gets good play in the center, counterplay on the queen side uh, against the white king here. So very sharp, tense struggle, that's the main line. But Ali Reza doesn't actually go e5 and advance the pawn. He plays a3 immediately, and there's only about a thousand games from here in the database I'm looking at, because when you play like this, well now you give black the opportunity to take on e4 here. Now this wasn't played, but the key difference is that now when you go queen to g4, attacking this pawn, attacking this pawn here, well, what I'm highlighting on the board is that because there's no white pawn on e5, covering the f6 square, well, now black can actually go knight to f6, which you can't do in other variations. Now, white's forced to take, you know, the knight holds this pawn, you hit the rook, but it slides across, and the queen covers the knight, the knight covers the pawn and the rook, so queen h6 is forced, game goes on from here, the material's level, very imbalanced, and it would seem to be roughly level when you run this position. So Ali Reza had obviously done his homework, he was ready to play from here, and this is often why white doesn't go down this route. But instead of taking on e4, white, uh, black rather, didn't really take the bull by the horns here. Instead, knight to e7 was played, but this is just a little bit passive because now Ali Reza doesn't advance the pawn, maybe black wanted this to then get knight f5 or something, or knight g6, but Ali Reza goes bishop to d3, and now he can cover that pawn with the bishop if it's captured. So black doesn't capture the pawn, instead goes b6, but again, this is an instructive moment, really you had to go c5 here, and that's the main move, because you already strike at the center, you know, in the game, Ali Reza gets pawn c4 in, sets up this massive center, but you couldn't do that here because you'd get something like this, you know, you've decimated the white center. But after this pawn to b6 move, coming back here, pawn b6, preparing c5, well now Ali Reza can go c4 immediately, and this is very different. Bishop a6 was played here, but now Ali Reza can take, the bishops got traded, queen recaptures, Pawn takes, and now he goes c4. He's got rid of his double pawns. Look at that massive center here. And black's already in some opening trouble because if you take either way here, let's take you say you take on c4, queen recaptures, well, it's really hard to get c5, or then we go d5, you know, something like this. We get this monster diagonal, big center, just a big advantage for white. So it's just not an ideal setup. And that's why black doesn't actually take one of these central pawns. Instead, c6 was played, trying to maintain that center. But now Ali Reza's got this free hand to develop his minor pieces. When you've got the space in the center, you want to try and maintain it if you can. Use that space for your pieces. So he just calmly goes knight f3. Both sides castle their kings. And now this was really the nail in the coffin for the black player with how they played this next maneuver. The best move here is to just try and continue developing pieces. So rook e8 is a decent move. You can also go pawn h6 here. If we look at the rook e8 one, well, this is one sample line that might get followed. If you went a4, preparing this bishop a3 stuff, 
well at least then you can go knight to d7, get your minor pieces developed, connect your rooks in a moment, activate the queen. White still stands better, but at least black's getting out here. But what we saw here in this position after both players castled was queen to d6. And this is just a really dubious queen maneuver basically. So it was probably playing against bishop f4 here. Also we see the queen transfer to g6, pressure the king. That must have been one of the attacking ideas. But after pawn a4 from Ali Reza, superb calculation, absolutely the right move. The bishop's now coming to a3, and so the rook gets off that diagonal, the bishop comes anyway, and queen d8 is actually the best move here as I'm highlighting, a kind of miserable retreat to keep things connected. After queen to g6, now black's in a lot of trouble, because Ali Reza takes, and he's about to land the knight on e5. Now, black takes with the knight here a tactical response, which is a mistake. But if you take with the pawn, you're still in a lot of trouble because knight e5 is a killer move. Now it looks like you're just hanging a pawn, but the big problem is this response of queen to b5. And because these rooks aren't connected and you can't actually develop this knight, you know, all the squares are covered, you can't even do anything in this position, you're just paralyzed. So the rook's attacked, about to be taken. If you slide it across here, let's say, will you lose your knight? This is the other problem. And say you go king f8, trying to hold everything together. Well, white can simply bring some rooks across. This is a sample line, just blast through the center. And really, black's not long for this world. You can get something like this. You're hitting the rook in the corner. You're threatening mate. Everything's unprotected. Big, big problems for black. So this is the problem with actually taking that pawn on d5 with the pawn. It was the best move, but still you're in a lot of trouble after knight e5. So instead, the knight took on d5 here, taking advantage of this pin. You can't do this or you lose your queen. But Ali Reza doesn't do that. He still goes knight e5. And this is black's tactical response. So you can't just move the queen, I don't know, say to f6, or then we just take the knight here. But what you can do is knight f4. You threaten mate here, and you also threaten to take the white queen if the knight takes your queen. So Ali Reza just shifted his queen across to f3 here. He defends the mate, also attacks this knight, and it's actually just impossible to defend it. So we had queen f6 in the game. If you go queen h6, you get the same thing. If you try queen g5 to defend it like this, well, then you can go h4. You decoy the queen here so that then you can go g3, pin both pieces. And although you can check like this, after king to g2, again, you just can't save the knight. After the queen retreats, well, then you can actually take on f7 with mate to follow here. And that's why you can't actually play like any of this. You know, you'd have to do something different in this position. Essentially, the piece is just dropping off the board. There's a few side variations. So it's no good to try queen g5. Instead, we had queen f6, but now knight g4 was played. The queen's overloaded, protecting the knight. It's running out of squares. Again, this is running into all of this stuff. So instead, the queen took on d4. We now had takes on f4 here. And although black crashes through, picks up this pawn, and looks like they're winning back the piece, here's the big problem. A rook slams down on the e-file, and you don't have time to do this, or you're simply getting mated in one. Once again, this pathetic knight hasn't developed, isn't in the game, hampering the black position, crucial problem. So here we had f5 play, desperate last ditch attempt. Ali Reza simply takes that one, even though it gave the king room, now you're about to checkmate here, and there's just nothing that black can actually do that's in any way sensible. You know, if you develop the knight to a6 or d7, well, we can just pick up your rook, you know, that's an entire three rook there. So instead here, we had takes on e1, and now Ali Reza delivered checkmate on the f8 square. So an absolute crush. He's two out of two after two games. If you missed the first one and want to catch up, then click here. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.